Word of God, and, and I am excited about what God is doing. I can't hardly stand it. This is the beginning of the year, and I, let me tell you what's going on right now in the spirit realm. People are being fought. They're being spiritually fought. The, the devil would like to take the body of Christ right now and put a hopelessness and despair on it because of things going on in the world, tragedies and events in your family, and just internal unrest within you or maybe within your family. And, and I'm well aware that this is going on. But let me tell you something. Please do not get your eyes off of the wrong thing. If you get your eyes on the problem and you don't keep them on Jesus, you're going to be disappointed. Only Jesus, only Jesus can take you through any difficulties that you have and what you're going through. Only Jesus and the power of his Holy Spirit can lift you up when the devil tries to put his foot on your neck. I don't know about you, but it's time that the church stand up and say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I believe it's time to rise up. I believe it's time to be the light, to be the word, to be the person that stands up in my family because devil... You can't have my seat any longer. That's my seat, and you need to get out of it. And I believe that there's a message to be shared with people that we know and love, as well as people that are out there looking for somebody that has some hope. If anybody should have hope, it should be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If anybody should have joy, it should be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of hard circumstances, you can have joy and hope. Amen. Because our joy is not in the stuff and the things. Our joy is not because everything's going right every week. Our joy is in Jesus. Our hope is not because of what man could afford us and give us or what the, the economy or money or government can afford and give us. Our hope is because of Jesus. Friend, there's an empty tomb that once held a body of a dead man that is now empty because supernatural power came and gave him hope. That man is Jesus. That man, because he rose from the dead, gives me hope that even though the circumstances and troubles that you may go through look like a dead horse, look like there's no hope, Jesus can change that in your life. How many know what I'm talking about? Say a good amen. We have been talking about the rhythms of the church, and last week Pastor Stephanie talked about prayer. And, and this week, we're going to build on the rhythm of our individual life. Now, we talked in the first week about vision and the rhythm of the church being going to seek, then winning those that you found, and then discipling those that have been won to the Lord. So there is a seeking, winning, discipling, or teaching aspect. That's for the body at large. That's for every ministry of the church. But during the week... I have some things I can do that my body, my personal self, can be in a rhythm with God so that I can stay strong. One of the first things we need to do to stay strong and stay in a rhythm that God has given us according to his word is, is to pray. But if we look at Matthew, the sixth chapter, Jesus gave us three wins, three wins. The first win that he gave us in Matthew, the sixth chapter, is found in the third verse. I mean, the second verse, it says, when you give, when you give. And then again in the third verse, when you give. This is a rhythm that Jesus says is not if I give, it's when I give. In this particular case, it is giving to the needs of those that are less fortunate. In this particular case, it's an expression of love. It's an expression of generosity to those that are doing without or they're going through a hard situation. So Jesus said, part of my rhythm as a body of a person of Christ, part of my strength comes from the fact that I'm a giver. The second thing it says, verse five, when you pray. Verse six, when you pray. Verse seven, when you pray. The beginning of each one of those verses says when you pray. Once again, it does not say if I pray, if I pray, if I pray. Jesus says standard equipment on the believer is giving and praying. Now, I happen to believe that giving is one of those things that, that is not necessarily first, even though it was first in God's mind, because God gave so that I could be saved. 
Amen? If Jesus had not given his life, I cannot be saved. God so loved the world that he gave. So maybe giving should be the first part. I've always thought it, prayer was the first part. But as I'm sitting here talking to you, maybe I'm jumping the gun here. It may be the fact that I give Jesus my life, and the first thing that I do is pray. I pray to invite Christ into my heart. I pray to stay intimate with God. But the teaching on when I pray has to do with this. I pray in private, is what it says in verse 6. I do not just give meaningless prayers, babble on, give ceremonial prayers. Hey, man, that guy is a really good prayer. Man, I love to listen to him pray. But is there any power in it? Is there any meaning to it? So when I pray, I should do it in public. I'm, I should do it not in public, but in private. When I pray, I shouldn't just babble on and babble on and babble on. And then finally it says in verse as I flip the page, it says in verse 16, when you fast. Verse 17, but when you fast. Three things. Giving, praying, fasting. And I want to zero in on the fasting one today. A couple of side notes here that Jesus mentions in this passage in Matthew 6. It says, when you fast, when you fast, you do not do it to be noticed. As a matter of fact, he says, wash your face and comb your hair. People should not even know that you're fasting. Don't put on long faces and look ceremoniously pious and holy. Oh, I'm fasting. Oh, you're not fasting? Well, can't you be like me? That's not what this is about, folks. Fasting is about gaining spiritual power. Fasting is about consecrating ourselves to God. Fasting is a consecration. Exodus 29, 35 says this. Great passage. It says, And thus shall you do to Aaron and to his sons, according to the things which I have commanded thee. Seven days you shall consecrate them. Fasting is a consecration. It's a thing we dedicate. It's a thing that we set apart. It's a set of time. It's an activity we set apart and make holy unto the Lord. Fasting is this time that I'm taking that I would normally eat and I, would, and I will not eat. I will dedicate that time and the meaning of it to the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13 says, In the days when you pray, I will listen. But if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Look for me with all your heart. So we need to dedicate ourselves not just by fasting, but this looking for God with everything. Now, let me tell you where I see the difference here. I can pray, but that doesn't mean I am wholeheartedly looking for God. There are a lot of prayers, would you agree with me, that when you pray them, you thought, well, that didn't go anywhere. That was meaningless. You ever seen somebody pray over the food, and, you're, and they're saying it so fast, and I hope nobody will notice that you wondered why they even prayed? Come on, shake your head. Well, I can pray, and I can pray with meaning, and I can pray as a consecration to the Lord, but I can fast, and I can fast with, with meaning and intent as a consecration to the Lord. Most people that I know do not like to fast. I'm probably considered one of them. For a long time, I always felt it was an obligation to have to tell people we need to fast, or I'm fasting, or you're fasting, will you join me in fasting? But then I read this part that says it's a consecration to God. It's a consecration to God. It's, it's when I sacrifice food and starve the flesh. Food feeds the flesh. The flesh and my stomach will tend to, that represents the flesh, will tend to rule over me sometimes. There's some things I know I need to do, but the flesh just I'm too tired, or I don't want to, I'd rather do this, or this is more fun. But I know that that's the better spiritual thing to do. Will you agree with me? And what happens, it means the flesh is stronger than your spirit when you fall into that and you do the things of the flesh. If you fall into temptations of the flesh, it means your spirit is weak. If there are things that are going on in your life right now and you know you need to do something else, you're not doing it right, you got a flesh problem. And it's easy to say that because so many of us know that we all will battle the flesh because as Paul says in Romans, we live in a body of flesh and we will be tempted to do the things of the flesh as long as we're alive in these bodies. 
It's not a question of if you or you will be tempted to do things in the flesh. It will not be a question of whether or not you will have strong desires to do wrong things and fall in for them and actually do them. It's more of a question as how will I overcome those strong desires? How will I overcome those habits, those addictions, those strongholds? And one of the ways that we do that is by fasting. Now, fasting is not the same thing as Lent. In some denominations, there's a practice called Lent. How many are familiar with what I'm talking about? It's during a specific period of time, you dedicate to God a certain thing, you give something up, but it's not necessarily food. And during Lent, you give up something that you like, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, giving up a hobby or giving up a a chocolate cake for seven days or ten days or whatever, or giving up your television or giving up your internet, those are all fine and good things to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But fasting involves food. When you read the Bible, it always involves food. So fasting is not Lent, and I need to straighten that out because last year somebody said, well, I'm going to give up this. I'm saying, well, that's not fasting. Fasting involves food. Because see, see what the irony of it is? You might give up your internet for a week, but you're still feeding the flesh. And fasting involves a warfare of the flesh because it involves king stomach right here. King stomach wants what king stomach wants. And the only way you can come above that in a spiritual realm is you've got to starve king stomach out, the flesh out, so that you are putting yourself in a situation to walk in the spirit. Somebody say a good amen. Some people say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll fast lunch today. No. No. Now, listen to me. If fasting to you is just simply skipping a meal, you're not fasting. Fasting does what eating does. When you eat food, you're feeding your flesh, you're feeding your body with with fuel to be able to go on. If you don't have the fuel from food, you can't make it. You'll get too weak. Okay. When I fast... I am feeding my body with spiritual things and depriving myself of fleshy, worldly, body things, flesh. So when I would normally be picking up a spoon and diving into that meat and potatoes or or a salad or whatever people want to eat, when I would normally be just chewing on that stuff, now I push away the physical food and I start eating spiritual food, the Word of God. Worship, praise, meditation, prayer. What literally happens is you literally, in symbolic is you're turning your plate over where no food's on it, and follow this, and you are now taking that time, that same time you would normally eat. You're not sitting there watching everybody. What's the matter? Why aren't you eating? I'm fasting. Bless God. I'm just trying to get closer to Jesus. And you're sitting there going, oh, really? You want to get closer to Jesus? Okay, good, good. And the insinuation is there, why don't you be like me? Why can't you turn your plate over like me? Why can't you be holy like me? Now, what that comes off that way too many times, what's the Bible say? Put on a smile, comb your hair, don't let anybody even know you're fasting. Sometimes that means, hey, I can't make it, maybe I'll see you in a week. I'll, I'll see you in tomorrow. I can't make it to that meal, you know, because I've, I've got a previous appointment. You don't have to go, bless God, I'm fasting. I'm going to be holy. I'm going to be spiritual. Get away from me, you sluggards. Don't touch me, you meat eaters. I smell gravy on your breath. No, no. They're not even supposed to know you're fasting. You're not supposed to look like a drudgy person or a scroungy person or wiped out person. You're supposed to be no difference. 
So during the time that you fast, take that opportunity instead of eat to feed your spiritual person. Worship, praise, meditate, read, study the Word, pray during that time. Do it during that time. Use that time to build up the spiritual man instead of just feed the stomach. How many see what I'm saying? Amen? Okay. So in Matthew chapter 17, we have an example of this, fasting. Matthew chapter 17, there's a big crowd gathered at the bottom of the hill, and they're having kind of a contention. They're having these, there's a large group of people, there's teeter-tottering in their faith between what Jesus is preaching and what his, his purpose is and who he is and, and what the disciples represent because the disciples are not able to produce the same thing that their master does. You see, they brought a demon-possessed boy to them before Jesus got there, and the disciples did everything to try to, to, try to exercise that, the, the, the demon out of the boy. It was extremely hard, it's extremely dangerous, extremely stronghold, this possession. I mean, I don't know, maybe they rubbed his head till it was greasy. I don't know what they did. They may have patted him on the back or rubbed him on the back until they're trying to get everything in where they can. You know, I don't know what they did. And you, you've seen people whenever there's, perhaps this may be new to you, but, but there are demon-possessed people that go to church. And what happens when demon-possessed go people go to church? They are not there to receive. They are there to disrupt. Just the presence of demons tries to disrupt the presence of God. Amen. That's why sometimes when God moves in, in a powerful way, people that are being troubled with demons, people that are demon-possessed, they, they have the most un ridiculous look-at-me type of stuff go on. Anyway, they couldn't exercise the demon out of this boy, and Jesus is coming to him and says, what's the matter? Well, your disciples, you know the ones you're teaching? You know the ones that you spend all this time with? They couldn't do the job. They couldn't get the job done. So now we're wondering if you're for real. We're wondering if because they can't get the job done and you're teaching them, what's this going on? What's, what's the situation here, Jesus? So Jesus calls over the boy and he says, hey, come here. And he prays and he exercises the demon out of him just like that. And the demon leaves. Now, I know that there are people listening on tele, on, on, online and even in here, you're going, I don't believe in that spooky spiritual demon possession stuff. Well, honey, it's real. You're too late. I've run across too many people. I've prayed for too many people that have, have been demon possessed and I've seen them manifest and it's every, it's every crazy and terrible thing that you can ever imagine. Most of the time, people never are exposed to it when you're not ready to be exposed to it. See, that's why some people in all their life will never be exposed to it, at least in a way that they know, because as it becomes more spiritually aware and has become more spiritually alive in Christ, they begin to pick up on things going on in the Spirit a lot quicker, and then they realize, hey, that was, that was done by a devil. That was, that was demonic there, what's going on. You begin to see situations that other people try to go to the doctor and just get medicated for when they really need to be as exercised. Yeah, I said it. There are some people on medication right now that medication is not going to take care of some of this stuff. What they need to do is have the devil cast out of them. Now, I'm not saying that for everybody on medication. I'm just saying that I know countless, countless times. I mean, I've walked down the mental wards of certain places. Western Missouri mental ward. I walked down that way. And, and as I began to walk down that, the, the demons would begin to cry out on each side as I was walking down the hallway. Because the Spirit of God who is with us, the angels of God who is with us, they don't want any part of the angels. They don't want any part of the Spirit of God that's on you. And when the God comes in, they, they cry in torment because they want him to go away. Don't go away. It's too pure, too holy, too wonderful is God, too wonderful, powerful is the Holy Spirit. And when he's on your life and anointing you, they don't want you anywhere around because your light exposes their darkness. Well, this demon had a stronghold on, on this boy, and he says this, come out, he came out. The disciples got together with Jesus later and say, what's the deal, Jesus? We love you, 
We follow you. We obey your word. We've done everything. You know we love you, Lord. Yeah, I know that. Well, what's the deal? Why couldn't we see this happen when we prayed? He says, some things, things like this. I, I believe you could just think about pointing to that demon possessed boy. Things like this. Some things only come out through prayer and fasting. And he says, you are so faithless. You're so unbelieving. So he indicates that the problem is we don't have faith and we do not believe when we pray. Because if they had believed and had faith when they prayed, this boy would have been delivered. But he says, he goes one step further. It's not just the unfaith, but there are these certain types of mountains. Because he talks about speaking the mountains and be removed and cast in the sea. He says, there are certain types of mountains. There are certain types of problems that you just can't simply pray and expect them to be answered. It takes more. It takes fasting and prayer. How do I know if I have one of this kind of problems? This kind of problem, fasting and prayer, whatever. How do I know if I have a this kind of problem? Well, have you been praying, simply just praying for a long time and not seeing any difference? Have you been feeling like the heavens feel like they're brass and there's nothing going on? Have you been feeling like you're running into a wall and you have this problem, this stronghold, this addiction over and over and over and you fasted and, I mean, you've prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing's changed. And when you even talk to people and say, but I've been praying, I want to say and I want to enter this for your thinking. Maybe what you've got going on is a this kind of mountain. This kind of mountain that you're not seeing movement on needs not just to have prayer but also fasting. This kind of mountain will never move with just prayer. It takes fasting. Does it make sense? If I've been praying for months and months and months for a change or years and it hasn't changed, then I'm going, well, it's not working. Well, that's not God's problem. He's given us in the Word saying, you may have to understand you're under an elite situation, under an elite type of problem. You're not dealing with the sniffles and the runny nose here. You're dealing with a disease and something that could be deadly to you. Some things take a this type of prayer, fasting and prayer. There are some things that we need to realize that happened in our life that, that, that won't move until we take a more intense action because when I fast, I begin to move in the spirit realm even deeper. When I fast and I deprive my flesh, what happens is my spirit becomes freed up. It becomes more open to be more sensitive to God. Maybe God has been speaking, but because I haven't been fasting and my flesh and my desires and my emotions and my wants have clouded everything up, but I want this. And God says, but you need this. But I want this. And God says, but you need this. And when you begin to fast and add that to your prayer, you're going, oh, I need this. You know what fasting is? I had to run the store just before service. Fasting is like Drano. You get a little water going through your pipes, but it's not going down as fast as it should. There's things clogging it up. And then eventually, it runs slower and slower and slower. It's kind of like a person's spiritual life. At one time, the drain's completely clean, and it goes through just as fast. And then, then all of a sudden, stuff starts getting in there, the yucky junk, the corrosive, the, the hair, and the junk goes in there, maybe, you know, and, and, and it, things are moving slower, and you're thinking, this thing is not working like it ought to. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll pour more water into it. See, the water's supposed to flush that stuff down, right? The water's supposed to flush that stuff down that you put in the sink, right? Well, here's what I'll do. Some of that stuff's stuck. Some of that stuff is still around. And, and what I need to do is I need to throw some Drano in there. 
So it gets in that junk and it begins to dissolve and clean that back up, clean that blockage out. Fasting's like Drano. Fasting's like a spiritual Drano, folks. And I'm not advertising, I'm not getting paid for this advertisement. But sometimes we have this, this blockage in our spirit that we can't hear God as quickly as we used to. We, we can't, we don't have the spiritual strength we used to, the energy we used to. You know what the problem is? It's not God and it's not people around you. It's the fact that your lines are plugged up. It's the fact that you need to take some spiritual drain on it called fasting and set some time away with God. I got this addiction I can't beat. Hello? This kind comes through fasting and prayer. I got these desires I don't want. I'm trying to get away of, and, and I'm falling into all that. This time comes through fasting and prayer. I have this habit. I have this disobedience. This type is alleviated by fasting and prayer. And I don't know what you've got going on in your life, but God loves you so much, he sent his son, and his son gave you the remedy for the problems. Because God doesn't want to save us and make us walk in misery all our life with problems. We're going to have problems, but we don't have to be miserable because of them. We're going to have problems, but we don't have to be devastated and destroyed because of our problems. How many know what I'm talking about? It's not a sin to have a problem. The sin is not doing anything about it. It's not a sin to go through difficulties. And whether whether they're intention, you did it intentionally or you did not do it intentionally, some, it was on something else, the problem is not doing anything about it. God says, when you pray, expect answers. When you pray, expect that I hear you. And when you fast, know that your prayers have just been supercharged. Know that there's something added to them to unclog. Daniel prayed for 21 days, and, and the angel of God came to him and brought him an answer. But do you know that Daniel didn't just pray? He fasted. Because it's hard to get spiritually in tune and aware of what's going on around us if our flesh is speaking to us stronger than our spirit. Those, Jesus was saying to his disciples, it's hard to cast out devils when you can't even turn over your plate. It's hard to cast out demons when you can't even turn over your plate. What kind of devils, what kind of problems do you have in your life today? What's going on? What's been long-term? And, and ask yourself, at the beginning of 2019, I want this gone. I got this with the disciples. Remember, they love God. They follow God. They left their homes. They followed the things of God. They followed the Son of God. They, there wasn't any problem with their love to God, just like there's no problem with your love to God. What the situation was is that Jesus said, you're forgetting the thing. You're not being faithful in your fast. Because you don't want, basically saying, because you don't want to make that sacrifice. You're basically saying, God, do it this way, and this is the only way I want you to answer is by my prayer. When God says, you know, if it isn't working just by prayer, add the fast, add the Drano to it, see the thing taken care of. Right? Come on, somebody. Where are you tonight? Where are you this afternoon? As you enter 2019, what do you need the Lord to take care of in your life? And then ask yourself this question. Will I totally trust and believe God as I pray to see him answer these things? And if need be, if it has been a while, if I've been facing this for so long without any type of, of remedy, any type of answer, am I willing to go the next step and pray? You say, well, Pastor Tony, how long should we pray? I don't know. I don't know if it's a meal. I don't know if it's a day, three meals. I don't know if it's a week, three days. I don't know. But I want to ask you that we'll do that, this with me. Just increase your time with fasting and prayer. I'm going to ask you specifically. You know, we have service on Wednesday nights around here. I'm going to ask you to agree with me and fast on Wednesday. I'm not going to tell you whether it's a breakfast, lunch, or dinner. But fast at least one meal with me on Wednesday this week and for next week until the end of the month. At least, and what I want to ask you to do is as you fast, do nothing except get strengthened in the spirit. 
Pull that Bible out. Pull that praise music in, whatever you got to do. Begin meditating on the Word of God and see yourself get stronger. Some people may need to fast the rest of this week every meal. Start on Monday. Make it a full week. But whatever you do, whatever you do, it's not because you're doing this work of fasting to get, to, to, to get better with the Lord. You've already got a relationship with God. You're doing this thing called fasting to get closer to God. To hear him strongly, you're only one, one direction away from God. You're only one sentence away from God to see your whole life turn around. Did you know that? I am believe that whatever, whatever's going on in your family life, there's only, you're only one conversation, one sentence, one direction away from God speaking to you until the whole thing can turn around doesn't have to be books and pages and weeks and months. I believe there's just one word from God and the whole thing can turn around. Do you believe that? Because if he can do that, and I know he can. Listen, if one word, he can create the universe and the sky and everything we see and everything we can't see. And there's so much power in words. I believe that he has the power to do for you and for me what we cannot even think about doing for ourselves. Would you bow your heads all over this place? I'm excited about, about this message this morning because I love the way the Word of God teaches us that it, it shows us the problem. It shows us what Jesus says about the problems we have. It shows us what we need to do to get answers to our problems. The flesh will not allow you to see yourself as much as it points to others. When a person's in the flesh, they're highly critical. Highly critical. When a person is in the spirit, listen to me closely, when a person's in the spirit, it's not really critical like it is, because the critical part destroys things. When a person's critical, and it's different between being critical and honest. If I'm going to be honest with somebody, I'll tell them the problem and, and I'll, I'll present an answer on how to help, come alongside and help. But to be critical is just kind of like, blah, there it is. And, and they are, there's no intention for coming alongside to help. And Jesus isn't being critical with me. He's coming alongside to help and say, this is what you need. This is how you do it. Now, don't go do it. How many would say with me this morning, Pastor Tony, I need, I need to get closer. I, need, I got some things I got to hear the Lord in my family, in my life, and things right now. I need to hear his voice, some clear instruction right now at the beginning of this year. Would you slip your hand up? Slip it up high all over this place. My hand's up there. So we agree together that all of us have these things. Can we go one step further and say that there's nobody sitting around you, beside you, in front of you in this church that can do a single thing for you except God to really change it? People can do things to temporarily ease the pain and help me, but it doesn't mean it changes anything because it can be back after they're gone or after things run out or tomorrow. Well, I just can't put up another minute with my husband, my wife, my kids. I, I just can't do any, you know, and, and you know, how many of you know what I'm saying? You need, you need to hear from the Lord. I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired. You need to hear from the Lord. I don't know what to do. I've been praying for so long. You need to hear from God. I've asked God to forgive me a thousand times, and I know he has, but I keep going back. I, I'm so tired of being in bondage, stronghold. You need to hear from God. You need a fresh touch of God in your life. You need the Spirit of God to speak to your soul and breathe life and moisture to this dry soul. Stand with me all over this house right now.
I would like for as many that you will this week to pray and fast. On Wednesday, would you fast with me? Would you fast with me? We'll be sending some more of those online on Facebook. We're sending some more situations to pray and fast over. One of them will be our country. Others will be our families. Those that are hurting. Those are lonely. Within you lies the ability to be somebody's help and answer unto the Lord. Within you lies the power of God that is available not just to change your life, but to change the lives of people around you for good. But even an egg is no good unless it's cracked open. An egg that's never cracked open is no good to anybody. And inside that egg is all the potential in the world to feed the hungry or to even bring life to something. But unless that egg opens, it's no good. Inside of you as a child of God is the Spirit of God. And sometimes this flesh has encapsulated us where we can't, it can't break out. We can't break out. I've watched pictures where little birds are trying to break out of eggs and the struggle they go through to break out. It just looks like almost more than what they can handle, but they finally get out. And a new life begins. A life that could not have happened inside that egg. As we fast and pray, it cracks that flesh. Pretty soon an arm goes out, another arm goes out, a leg goes out. Pulling that flesh that is restricted is too long. Our flesh has restricted us too long. And now it's time for the Spirit of God to come forth to help break the thing that is bound so long to bring fresh life and new life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we cry out for you to move in our hearts. God, I pray that there be a heavy burden for prayer and for fasting this week. I believe right now you're, you're challenging certain people that, to do this because they've never done it before. God, I pray right now that, that, that we just totally take our hands off the steering wheel and say, Lord, you take over. We'll put a whole faith and trust in you. We won't try to drive and say, when I get there, I'll let you determine what to do. No, we'll say, God, you drive and you determine what we do. God, I pray for every situation in this place, for every family that's going through a tremendous need in their life. Some are going through just, just hard physical situations, Alzheimer's situations, cancers, deafness, blindness, the inability to walk. Some are going through situations where weakness has entered the body, pneumonia, and, and God, and some don't even know what the answer is. Some don't even have, the doctors, all they're doing is prescribing. They're trying to do the best they can, but we have finally come to the realization that unless you undertake, Lord, we have no hope. Nothing will change unless you undertake. God, please don't let us go through 2019 the way we did 2018 and perhaps 2017. Please don't let us stay bound by this flesh and by the problems of this world. God, intervene. Send the Holy Ghost like fire and burn off the ropes and chains and the dross that are, that are holding our spirits back. Bring life in the name of Jesus to your situation, to your finances, we pray right now. There's some of you that are struggling right now. You love God, you follow God, you love the Word of God, but right now your faith is wavering whether or not God's going to do it, whether or not in the name of Jesus let your faith be strengthened. And if need be, 
Spend time, turn the plate over, and thank God that He's already provided. Thank God that He's faithful, and thank God that the answer is on its way. Thank you, Lord. Some of you that are going through marriage situations this morning, please listen closely to me. I know it tears your heart out. I know that you don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. And sometimes it feels like God's not even around. The disciples must have felt that with that demon-possessed boy. Where, where's the power? Where, where's, it, where's this at, God? But God is with you. He wants you to walk in the strength and the power of the Spirit. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I said, for the child of God, it takes the Holy Ghost. Some of you, I'm, I'm believing right now, there are people here that are spirit-filled believers. What I mean by that, you've been baptized the Holy Ghost. You know what it is to speak in tongues in another language. You know what it is to see signs and wonders and miracles come forth as you pray, not just other people. You've seen God in the sanctuary and His holiness and His power. And that's been a while for you now. Can I tell you something? It's not the sanctuary. It's not the people. It's not the preacher. It's not the teacher. It's you. It's you. Well, how do you know that? Because God can show up and talk to you if He doesn't speak to anybody else. And because He's that powerful, maybe there's need a little Drano in your spiritual walk right now. Open up that line of communication. Somebody in here is so dry. Somebody that's listening is so dry. You need to be baptized. You need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. Please hear what I'm saying. You need to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. Eating a steak won't do it. Songs won't do it. Hanging around with a bunch of Christians and having fellowship will not do this. What does it? Going after God with all your heart. Pushing the flesh down and saying, Spirit, rise up. Spending time in prayer and fasting and ask God to rebaptize you afresh with the Holy Ghost. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Does anybody understand what I'm saying? We need to be baptized afresh with the Holy Spirit. But to do that, you have to make up your mind first if that is what you want. See, some people, I believe there's somebody here going, I don't know what you're talking about, this baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the fact that Acts 2, 4 says, after you believe that there's a supernatural power and strength that comes from God to help you with your walk, help you with your life, help you live for Jesus, help you to be a witness and a light to other people. It's a power that pushes Jesus. Push to the back. Amen. How many would say this morning, I need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit? Would you slip your hand up there? Come on, lift it up high. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Put your hands down. How many in here would say, I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Lift your hands up. I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands up high. Please, lift it up high. Okay. Put your hands up. How many in here would say that I am filled with the Holy Spirit? I am operating in the max on that situation. God's alive and moving in me right now. I have faith and confidence in the things of God right now. I'm on the high side of this. Let me see your hand. Lift your hand up high. Okay. What's going on here is we have different categories of people, right? But here's one thing all of us have in common. We all need the Holy Spirit, regardless of where you're at. You may be up here today, but next, next month, you don't know. Hope you stay up there. Hope to God. For those of you that aren't there 
And you know what it's like to be there? We'll pray with you. We believe God will give you strength. Amen? Slip your hands near right now, everybody. Come on, slip it near. I just want to be sensitive to the Spirit of God right now. Move, Spirit. We wait on you. We wait on you. We wait on you. We need you more. We need you more. We need you more. We bow our hearts to you right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, 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 sweet Spirit. Now, would you right now just reach out the best way you know how and just begin to love on Jesus? That's called worship. Come on, just begin to love on Jesus. You don't have to shout. Maybe it's a whisper. But it's definitely an expression coming out of you. Begin to worship on the Lord now. Put worth on Him. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, would you come in and worship Him right now, in spirit and in truth? Worthy are you, Lord. There's somebody in this place right now as we begin to worship and we seek God together. The 2019, you're going to see your son come to Jesus. Right now, he's not serving God. He's far away from God. You're going to see your son. There's a son that will come to the Lord in 2019 that you've been praying for. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to fast. This is going to be broken. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has a decision they have to make about housing, lodging, where they're going to stay. Father, I pray right now that you, that you will just bring wisdom into that person and, and, and let the, the situation, the people, the connections, the, the contacts flow all together, that they will know that this is from you, that this will become greater than they realize, this will become a bigger blessing than they even realize. I pray right now for revelation knowledge that will come to you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Jeremiah that his light will break forth unto the righteousness. That the light of God is a revelation. It's an illumination. And God, I pray right now that you will illuminate people's minds and hard decisions that they're making concerning if they should stay at their job or not. What they should do with what you've blessed them with. I pray that you'll move right now in Jesus' name. Father, right now I take time to pray for our country. We so often want to take time and recognize and, and men and women, but God, it's time that the church comes back to you. And we ask Jesus set on the throne of not just our lives, but set on the set in the throne of your your church, God. Let the church be a force, a light in this dark world. We come against the kingdoms of men, and we ask that the kingdom of God be established. We pray for Lord. We pray for the love of Christ to go forth, humanity of Christ. We pray for justice. We pray, God, that you will move in a mighty way. 
You have our country resolve where, where it seems like political parties are so far apart that nobody, God, this is, this is wrong. And we know the reason why is that you haven't been put first. We know that what we're doing is seeking our own bellies, seeking our own attraction, seeking our own wants. And we should be concerned about your wants, your vision. But you did promise us that if we seek you first, you provide. And regardless of what's going on in our nation, you would provide for us. You would make a way where there be no way. We pray for our president, vice president. We pray for our congressmen, the Senate, the House. We pray for our judges. We pray for the executive branch. We pray for the brave men and women in our military today that have to be looking back at America from other countries and going, what in the world is going on there? That have to be saying, we've put our life on neck on the line. What are they doing? God, make, confu- make sense out of this great ball of confusion. We know confusion comes from the enemy. Not from you, from the enemy. And I believe he's trying to confuse men and women in a major way right now. God, we, we pray that you, you help men to stand up and be men. Not be born as a man and, and trying to live as a woman. We, we pray that, that, that God, that, that we're true to our gender. We pray, that God, that we're true to who you made us to be and that we will be satisfied with that. Direct us by your spirit. Direct us by your spirit. And everybody said, amen. As we dismiss today, please remember to fast and pray with us this week. Amen? I just feel like there's a, something being pushed. Something's getting pushed ahead right now. There's something getting pushed ahead right now in the spirit realm. And, and, and we, ha- we can't just say, okay, I'll let such and such do it. Let's all work together this week. Let's fast and pray for God to move on us as individuals and bring light to this dark world. Amen? God bless you all. We'll see you later.